It's Thursday, February 3rd, and the time for your Barbados Today Morning News update. Lawyers in Barbados weigh in on Tuesday's judgment by the Caribbean Court of Justice, which found that a man could be charged with raping another man, contrary to the position of the local court. Queen's Counsel Andrew Pilgrim and Attorney at Law Gregory Nichols spoke with Barbados Today on the CCJ's 6 to 1 majority verdict in the Stephen Allen 2015 rape case. Emmanuel Joseph reports. And on Wednesday, Queen's Counsel Andrew Pilgrim said he agrees with the CCJ's ruling. I feel as a matter of principle that it is possible for a man to rape a man because the Sexual Offenses Act does not distinguish between genders and rape can be committed when a person's anus is violated or a person's vagina is violated whether by whether digitally or by a penis or otherwise so I, I, I tend to agree with this situation. The Queen's Council also said he did not attach any special significance to the dissenting view of Barbados-born CCJ Judge Justice Andrew Burgess, who said he found that the act did not create an offence of rape of a male by another male. The beauty of a system like ours is that everybody don't have to agree. Unfortunately, when you get to the apex court, the dissent is neither here nor there. It just exists. Mm. And now you can do it over there. But, you know, if somebody agrees with... So if if the court doesn't agree, the majority rules are as simple as that. So if you like Justice versus reason, it does one thing, but mm. it doesn't matter because now we are second. Okay. Until, until that apex court now overrules itself. And if the apex court was something later to overrule itself and say they agree with Justice Burgess's dissenting judgment, the law would change. But right now, the law is settled and it's done. They don't have to discuss. Another prominent attorney and constitutional law expert, Gregory Nichols, did place some significance on the dissenting judgment. The two judgments themselves, the, 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 the leading opinion of the court and the dissenting opinion of the court, raised some very persuasive points that they really, really would take some time to consider what would be the impact and the effect of them as it relates to the law. Right. But uh, obviously the majority decision is the one that sets what the law is right. until such time as the court is persuaded to, 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 to deal with it. The judgment of the regional court, Barbados' final appellate tribunal, means that Stephen Allen's 2015 rape case will have to return to the magistrate's court for a preliminary hearing. But before the start of the evidence in his trial in the District B Magistrates Court, Alin had been discharged by the presiding magistrate after hearing submissions on the charge that alleged he had non-consensual sexual intercourse with another man on August the 2nd, 2015. Emmanuel Joseph for Barbados Today. Former opposition leader Bishop Joseph Atherley has welcomed the appointment of Crystal Drakes as an independent senator. Back in 2018, Bishop Arthur Lee nominated Drakes and Caswell Franklin to serve in the Senate as opposition senators. On Tuesday, Drakes was sworn in by President Dean Sandra Mason as an independent senator following the January 19th general election. Bishop Arthur Lee is in full support of her appointment to the Upper House, describing Drakes as one of the island's brightest stars who he believes has a significant contribution to make. I think Senator Drake is a marvelous pick um, by the president. Um, she is a bright young girl with a genuine interest in the betterment of Barbados and Barbadian people. She's progressive in her thinking, has some very good ideas with respect to issues of economy and growth, but also with respect to issues of climate change, resilience building, and uh, why the internet environmental issues. Um, she has served in the Senate for the last three and a half years, having been appointed by myself. I think she gave a very good account of herself. It does not surprise me, therefore, that Her Excellency would choose her as one of the independent senators at all. Bishop Arthurley maintained that he had no hard feelings about Senator Drix's decision to accept her new role. So they don't have feelings with that. that as for Christonia, she was a part of the GDP, but she was never um, interested in the elective political arena. She wanted to know anything like that for sleep. And she always presented herself within the group as, as being fairly apolitical. When the, when the party was started, of course she was a part of it, but um, that, that, that did not, because of the agreement and arrangements that we had, that did not have string her in any way to make her um, to 
be bound by a position that I held in the in the lower house of Berlin. For director of the Pan American Health Organization, Dr. Carissia Eaton, is urging millions of adults in the Caribbean who have yet to receive their COVID-19 vaccines to do so. The impassioned plea comes as COVID-19 infections, deaths, hospitalizations, and ICU admissions remain on the rise. I'm a medical doctor, a wife, a mother, and grandmother. And let me tell you that I could not wait to get my vaccination. I was so anxious for the well-being for myself and my 95-year-old mother who lives with me. And, and I can't begin to tell you the relief that I felt when I, my mother, my husband, and my children were vaccinated. And that is because I trust in science and I appreciate life. So please, don't delay. Get vaccinated today. COVID-19 vaccines are safe and effective, and they are the best way to protect ourselves, our families, and, and our communities from this virus. We cannot get back the time that we've lost to this pandemic, but we can control how the future will go. Returning to family traditions, cultural celebrations, and the moments that make life precious requires that we get vaccinated. Speaking at the PAHO's weekly COVID-19 press briefing, Dr. Etienne raised concern that vaccine coverage across Latin America and the Caribbean was still uneven and the vulnerable groups were particularly at risk. The Americas are the most unequal region in the world. And so despite our progress, vaccination remains uneven in Latin America and the Caribbean. A worrisome sign is that today, more than one in four people across the Americas have yet to receive a single dose of protection. While 14 countries and territories have fully immunized 70% of their populations, the same number of countries have yet to protect 40% of their people. And if we zoom in on low and middle income countries in our region, more than 54% of people have yet to receive a single COVID-19 vaccine. We also have serious blind spots because we can't see detailed vaccination data. We encourage countries to collect and report data showing vaccination coverage by age, sex, and by risk group where possible. There's regional and international news after this short break. Hi, I'm Onika. I am a mother, I'm a daughter, and I'm a wine educator. When vaccines first came on the scene last year, I was really apprehensive about getting vaccinated. I was worried about taking a drug that I felt was experimental. So at first, I really wasn't about it. I decided to get vaccinated. I had to acknowledge the fact that I am asthmatic and my son is also asthmatic. I have a career in wine. We depend on our senses, and I decided that I did not want to risk it for being afraid of taking a vaccine. Coronavirus has affected everyone around the globe. And keeping this in mind, make sure that your decision is not a selfish one and that you're thinking of the benefits of the whole. Let's roll up our sleeves and get back to living. To regional news now, health authorities in St. Lucia announced plans to adjust isolation periods for COVID-19 patients later this month. More from DBS News. The Ministry of Health announced that effective Monday, January 24, 2022, it would reduce the isolation period for persons diagnosed with COVID-19 from 14 days to 10 days. For vaccinated persons presenting with no symptoms, the isolation period would be cut down to 7 days. According to Minister for Health and Wellness, Moses Jabaptiste, the move is in keeping with global trends as well as guidance from the scientific community. It is very clear to us that we cannot treat COVID-19 or manage COVID-19 in the same way which we did two years ago, 2020, when there were no vaccines 
and when um, the, the policy was, was very restrictive. When there were no vaccines and so on, there, there, there were no um, um, tried and tested methods of isolation and so on, we were very restrictive, closed down everything, shut down everybody and so on. But as we progress, we, we recognize based on science, based on what the professionals guide us on, we recognize that we have to change the way we, we, we deal with COVID-19. According to Jean-Baptiste, the ministry is acting cautiously in its amendment of COVID-19 protocols as the island's healthcare system can ill afford a major influx of cases. The ministry reveals the upcoming protocols will be more targeted as the ministry has placed more scrutiny on areas of the island where COVID-19 is most prevalent. On the international front, the vast amount of waste produced in tackling the COVID-19 pandemic pose a threat to human and environmental health. That warning from the, the World Health Organization, which said tens of thousands of tons of extra medical waste had put a huge strain on healthcare waste management systems. More from Reuters TV. Discarded syringes, used test kits and old vaccine bottles from the COVID-19 pandemic have created tens of thousands of tonnes of medical waste, a World Health Organization report said on Tuesday. It says the material is a threat to both human health and the environment, potentially exposing health workers to burns, needle stick injuries and disease-causing germs. Communities close to poorly managed landfills could also be at risk through contaminated air from burning waste, poor water quality or pests. His WHO technical officer, Dr Maggie Montgomery. We found that COVID-19 has increased healthcare waste loads in facilities to up to 10 times current volumes. Um, and we, you know, if you consider that two in three healthcare facilities in the least developed countries didn't have systems to segregate or safely treat waste before the pandemic, um, you can just imagine how much burden this extra waste load has put on healthcare workers, on surrounding communities, especially where, where waste is burned um, with the release of daxons and freerons. Montgomery also says a misconception about the rates of COVID-19 infection from surfaces was to blame for what she called the overuse of protective gear, particularly gloves. The report calls for reform and investment, including by reducing the use of packaging that has caused a rush for plastic and for protective gear made from reusable and recyclable materials to be used. That's news. But for the very latest, visit us at www.barbidestoday.bb. You can also subscribe to our e-paper, email updates, or like us on Facebook, and sign up for our breaking news alerts via WhatsApp. We're also on Izumi Media in bus terminals, as well as screenplay at supermarkets and gas stations near you. And you can also hear us on Mix 96.9 FM and Capital Media HD 99.3 FM.